Rolling. All right. Yeah, this is a uh, pattern I developed for the Truckee over quite a few years of fishing the Truckee. And uh, a lot of the really big browns kind of focus on crayfish and, and sculpins and bigger things. They become, you know, just total predators after a certain point. So I focused on, on, on crayfish just because it was one of the biggest meals that they had available um, year-round. So uh, I tie it in a lot of different colors depending on what time of year I'm fishing it because, I mean, you know, different temps and different oxygen contents make the crayfish different colors. And when they molt, they turn another color too. So uh, I start out with probably a... Uh, Usu I mean, a typical size I use is an 8, but this is a 6, just bigger, so you can see it on the camera and see it from out there. Uh, this is a Dairiki, uh 710 and a size 6, so start out with that. Um, then after that, I put a base of 035 lead wire, probably do 10 or 12 wraps, um, you know, just to get some weight. Actually, in faster streams... Uh, or when the water's high, I'll, put a, I'll actually put dumbbell eyes on the back side of the hook just to get as much weight as I possibly can. Um, I'm using 70 fluorescent orange thread. It seems to be the right size and, and color for this application, but I mean, you can use whatever you want. Um, the color, it's just, I think it's more of a confidence thing. I think they'll take this fly if they're willing to eat. Uh, next, I get some Hungarian partridge. This is just for the little, the snout, the little feelers that the crayfish have on the front of their, front of their head. Just tie it into the front. It's not really. I don't think it's critical either. I think it's just kind of a makes me feel better and more confident about fishing it because it looks real. Then I get a. Uh, some Swiss straw usually comes on little cardboard, little cardboard uh, plate like that. I just cut off, I don't know, one turn of it. Tie it in. And I'll actually go through, if I'm going to tie a bunch of these, I'll go through and pre cut and I'll just prep everything. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap all my hooks with, with lead and do everything ahead of time just so it doesn't take so long to do it every single time. Uh, next I get dubbing and I mean I like to kind of match the rest of the body material I'm going to use so the head, the dubbing portion, the head portion of the dubbing is kind of a gold color and like I said it, it can be any color that as long as you, I mean if you want it to be green you can make it green as long as it kind of matches the rest of the body. And it's just bulk. You don't really have to worry about, you know, dubbing wax or anything special. You know, you just kind of dub it on loosely because the rest of it will be held together by that Swiss straw. I don't really worry about this first couple steps a whole lot. Next, I get it, you know, CDC works better than the other material. I was using rabbit before, but it was so cumbersome to just trim the rabbit every single time. And it, because I tried to prep it and it would just be a loose ball of rabbit. And it would just, I mean, if I breathe or anything, it, it's gone. So I just found CDC works pretty good because it's kind of already in that, that shape that I want anyway. So I tie them with the, uh, the curve of the CDC facing in to kind of give it a, a pincher, like like a crayfish claw look. <coughs> and then I get, uh, I get uh, grizzly marabou in whatever, like I said, whatever color you want. And just get 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 one. Actually, find two that have kind of matching fibers and matching bars. And I'll just kind of put that bow on the outside, facing in, same as the, the way their claws are shaped. Uh, 
All right. Is there audio with it? Oh, with it? Is there yeah. audio? <laughs> oh, we just covered it. Just trim, trim the excess, the tag in, because you're going to be tying over that. And then uh, start with the other side. And I just I, I just tie them in and I even them out. I pull them back until they match up. And I'll actually I don't know I like to kind of experiment with different claw lengths and I don't know all kinds of different stuff. I'm always changing this fly, but I've got a couple staples that I just tie all the time. Uh, okay, so now that I got the, the claws, the pinchers done, um, I'm going to make a little wrap of dubbing that I'm actually going to brush out with a gun brush. And you'll see this step, I'll do it in a little bit, but this, this part I really like because it kind of wakes the fly up, makes it look alive, more alive than it looks without it. So I always add this in kind of a little bit later. Yeah, pass that fly around. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask me, I can answer them. So after I get that dubbing in, I'll uh, actually I tie in a, I tie in a, a tuft of um, ostrich. You get this ostrich and you tie in the tips. This is actually going to make up the underbelly portion of the fly. Clip it off. Uh, tie in some hackle. I like to use this kind of like a brown or even sometimes a little bit lighter but this is just to make little legs kind of make the body look more realistic strip off all the junk tie in the tie in the rest of it and then I got gold wire in small just on a spool like that I mean small and gold seems to look the best depending on what color you use or what color the rest of the body is You want to tie this wire in good. I've gotten to that point where you go and, yeah, I mean, your wire is kind of the last, one of the last steps on this fly, and I've gotten to where you get right to where you're about to tie it in. And if you don't tie it in good, that last step, you'll yank the wire out, and then you don't have the ribbing on the body, and it's pretty frustrating. So make sure you tie that in really good. And then, uh, okay, so now that you have all these components dangling to the front of the fly, just start wrapping first bit of material forward and that, that would be the ostrich alright now that I got that done now it's time for that Hackle, and like I said, these are going to be the legs. So you start, you make one full turn on that front, right between the dubbing and that ostrich, and then you just start wrapping back. Make sure to use a long enough hackle to where you can really kind of hold on to it, because it'll, it'll, it's easy to grab one that's too small, and it'll just either break or, uh, or just completely you run out of room. So now you pull this Swiss draw back, making sure you pull your wire out to the side so you're not kind of wrapping this when it's kind of facing forward. Actually, I forgot to say, trim this because sometimes it can be kind of overwhelming with that. It'll just make it two bunched up. So trim the very top. Just trim the very top of the uh, that, that hackle off. Haircut. Yeah. All right, and then just start wrapping back. Usually, crayfish have about five five segment, segments past their head, so I try to kind of duplicate that five or six. You know, I don't think the fish pay that much attention, but you never know. Some can count. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder how high they can count. Mike Finsley got 